Well, hello there. Have you ever thought about the meaning of the words sum and difference? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So get your things and we'll get started. in your math book, it will ask you to solve for the sum or to find the difference. Do you know what the meaning of those words are? When it comes to solving for a sum, we're talking about putting things together or adding them. When it comes to finding the difference, we're talking about taking something away or comparing. So let's do a little bit of that now together. All right, so sum and difference, that's what we're concentrating on today. So how about, like I was showing you, I put my cubes together like this. Let's take a look and see what equation we need to write. I'm going to count by twos. Sometimes we can count by ones, but how about we count by twos? Two, four, six, and one more is seven. So we have seven on this side. And if we're looking for the sum, what um, mathematical symbol will I put here? That's right, a little plus sign. And how many do we have here? Two, four, and one more makes five. All right, seven plus five. I know you can do that one probably in your head, but we can also use our cubes to solve for it. Now, you know me, I'm always about 10, so I'm looking at these and immediately I say, well, if I'm at seven and I wanna get to 10, I need three more. That gives me 10, 11, 12. And so my answer is 12. I found the sum of seven and five. The sum of seven and five is 12. Okay, let's talk now about where we'll eventually go with all of this. We're going to use that idea of part, part, whole, just like we've done with our cubes. Move these guys over but we can represent that in one continuous bar. I can show my seven here and my five here. This is a part, this is a part, and my whole is 12. So I've used this bar to represent seven and five. Hope that makes sense. Now, if I want to talk about comparing for difference, I can say, what's the difference? We could say between the red bar and the blue bar. Well, we already know the totals. We have seven and we have five. So when I'm talking about the difference, the sign I use is the subtraction sign. And what I love about this is we can really just see that the difference is two cubes. But remember what we just did with that bar? We can do the same thing for difference. All right, let me draw one bar that represents the whole. In this case, seven. Now I'm going to draw a bar that's comparing seven to five. And I want to know what the difference is. In this case, my two bars can show me a whole, a part, and what is not here is the missing other part. And so we have a part, and my answer in this case is a part if I begin an equation with a whole. I'm taking a part away from my whole, and so what's missing is two. Sometimes you might see the bar's really more connected. So pretty much the same thing, just that you might see it like this, kind of like a number bond bar. And we've got our five here, ooh, kind of a little hard to read. And then so I know what goes here is two. 
So these are things you already know, but we're starting to work and make them um, even a little bit more complex for you. So just like we started by combining seven and five, what if we use the bar now to represent two parts? One part is 70 and one part is 50. Does this sound familiar? Now we have our equation, 70 plus 50, and we want to know the sum. Well, remember a moment ago, we added seven and five and got 12, but in this case, we need to show that we have 12 tens. And again, sometimes you might see it shown like this, where we're asking for the sum of 70 and 50, and you're going to show the whole, and 70 and 50 is representative of a part. All right, using that same idea, let's say that our whole is 70, and that one of the parts is 50, and that I want to find the difference between the two. Remember that word difference goes to subtraction. So we say 70 minus 50, and you can think of seven minus five, but we're saying seven tens minus five tens, and that gives us two tens or 20. Part, part, whole. So it looks like this, 70 minus, and we're working with difference, it's a minus sign, and that equals 20. Good job. Okay, well sometimes you might have an equation that is even a little more complex. But we can still show it with our bars. I can say, well, this bar represents 90. And I don't have to really make my bar a lot bigger for 90 than I did for 70. That's another thing to know, that on your page, you wanna make a bar that's a reasonable size to work with not too large, not too small. And um, I'm going to compare 90 to 54. And what I want to know is the difference. Now, I might use a little mental math to solve that. Can we pull 60, which is the nearest 10 to 54? And if I pull 60, what do I have left? I've still got 30. 30 and 60 equal 90. Okay, let's do it. What is 60 minus 54? I think 10 minus four, good. That gives us a six. Now remember we put these two together. The difference between 90 and 54 is 36. Remember what I said before, we'll keep working like this on the page and then we'll be doing more and more complex math in our mind. Okay, just one more quick thing before you go today. So it might say the little phrase, find the sum of, or find the difference, and then it might give you numbers. And it's kind of tricky, but over time, you have to remember for yourself that find the sum of these two numbers simply means to add them together. These are the kinds of things that learning all this vocabulary around our math helps us later. We have to work at it hard now, and then later it's really going to help us out. So, we have to think, what's the way we want to work here to solve this mentally instead of stacking it? Some of you might remember, because we've done this before, that if I'm at 85 and I want to get to 100 because 100 is a friendly number, how, how many more do I need? Okay, so some of you got it and some of you said, huh? 
I need 15 more to add to 85 to get to 100. So from my 145, I'm gonna make a number bond. I'm gonna concentrate on the 15 that I need, and I'm gonna say, well, what will I have left to have my number bond be accurate? Yeah, 130, good. Now, if I remember that 15 and 85 equal 100, I can say, well, that would be 100 and plus the 200 gives me 300. Here I have 300. I'm gonna join that up with my 130. The sum of 145 and 285 is 430. Now, I would challenge you to try to think of a different strategy than the one I presented for you here with this specific uh, equation, but you're going to have lots of opportunities to be doing that with your work today. And I hope it goes really well and that you're very, very cooperative with your teacher. And I look forward to seeing you here next time.